Everybody, this is Nolan Cat here, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will be playing one of my favorite games. It's a game that is called, called a very interesting name, just Powder Game 2. This game has I have been playing for quite a while, and is one of my favorite games. So we shall get straight into it. Powder Game is a simple game about, well, being a person who can control a bunch of different types of powers. So we have powers like water and fire and powder, which is a substance that can light on fire quite easily. There's seeds and powder, and seeds will grow on powder. There's sand and seeds will grow on sand as well. There's many, many different things that we are going to check out today. So, let's get started with some of our first things, which our first material is going to be powder. And powder is a simple little material that is flammable. And it burns very quickly. Sometimes a couple pieces of powder are left over. Powder, although being the first material, really isn't used that much. Water is used a lot, on the other hand, and is has many different things that can be done with it. So there's also ice, and there's salt, and there's cloud. These are all different things that you can do with water. So, first of all, we can do with salt. So when salt touches water, it turns it into salt water. Which is an interesting thing. Salt does not melt ice, on the other hand. Although it should, most likely, ice will melt into water. And then fish can be put in to it and as it seems it seems like fish will actually eat salt water and stop salt water from being well salt water when if you get a pool of water and then you have ice touch it the ice will slowly spread and take over all of the ice once there is no more ice left then it will be back to water. However, even if you melt some of it, it will turn back to ice. That is ice. Then, the final thing you have is clouds, and if you increase the speed, clouds will, when they touch something above them, will turn to water. When you put ice under them, you get, uh, well, ice. Now, the interesting thing is if you get sand, and you put seeds on it, they will grow into trees. If you get powder and you put seeds on it, they will grow into more shagged, less symmetrical trees. Gunpowder, if you put seeds on it, will have nothing happen. Mud, if you put seeds on it, will also have nothing happened. Now the very interesting thing about this is wood, which is the material that sh trees are made of. Being that wood is, first of all, the best fuel in the entire game, as there's many fuels which I'll show you in a second. Wood also, when interacting with water, will drop seeds. And cause extra growth. A small interesting little fact about water and wood. Although you can't actually spawn in wood without, there's only one real way to mass produce wood. And it's a pretty simple way. To mass produce wood, what you're going to want to do in order to mass produce wood is you're going to want to first 
get yourself some sand. This is the quickest way as well. Oh. Okay, you want to get some sand, but you're going to, if you place some sand, then you add some seeds. You just wait for the entire thing to turn to wood. Then, once you get your wood, what you do is you simply drag a bit off of it. You combine all of it together in one little chunk. You then want to erase what was left. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put some ants on it. The ants will grow the wood. You can add more ants if needed. What you'll get is you'll get a large amount of wood. Then you're going to want to increase your pen size all the way to 9. And you can drag big chunks of wood, which is also, this is the only material that does not fall when affected and is not affected by gravity. That can be dragged around. What you're going to do is you're just going to take as much as you can, try and keep ants out, and then you're going to want to kill ants that come near, and you're going to attempt to not let fire take hold of your wood, as it has ton to mine, which was just an accident, but not a happy one for sure. We are going to just clear away all of our wood and all of the ants before anything bad happens. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the copy and paste tool and you're going to want to copy a bit of it and then you can paste as much wood as you want. Right, let's review fuel. We'll start with the worst and go with the best. Nitro is a powerful fuel but is not very effective because one spark of fire and the entire thing will explode. And it is a not very good if you're trying to make machines that have fuel or just to use something that has fuel. Second place will go to gunpowder, which explodes. It's basically just powder, but explodes, except powder, which is our next, is just a little bit slower than it. Now, after powder, our next one is gas. Gas seems like it burns very quick, but it actually burns not as quick as powder. Next, which is our second best type of fuel, is oil. Oil is a strong fuel that, as you can see, will take much longer to burn than all the others. However, the best type of fuel is wood, which I showed later, but if we, which I, sh which I already showed, but wood will be a very good tool as when you burn wood, as you can see, if I speed everything up to eight times speed, as you can see, it still takes two or three seconds to burn all the wood, which is a very long time. Two or three seconds is a long time. And then it makes powder so the entire, even the waste product of it can be burned. So that is all that. We've also got some of our notable materials such as lava, water, stone, thunder, bombs, and laser. Let's get into some of these interesting ones, such as laser. Laser is interesting. It seems like it's just a laser that will light things on fire, such as powder. When really, laser is more than that. Because if you'd think that lasers could only do stuff that like light things on fire, but here we've got a pool of water. If you wonder what we're going to do, we're going to use a laser on it. And as you can see, the laser will actually vaporize the water as it comes, making laser a complete vaporizer. vaporizer. Virus is exceptionally cool because if we get a big pool of powder and then we pour a large amount of virus on it, we let it all sink down. Viruses will take it over, 
and sometimes they'll make it back. The example could be this. If we get a piece of virus, it attacks, and then it gets destroyed. However, sometimes it will not get destroyed and it will make a kind of infinite cycle. So that is a interesting thing that it can do. The next thing that we are going to talk about is vines. Vines are very powerful as vines will climb over everything and can be a bit infectious but not as infectious as the virus. The only way to destroy vines is by burning them and even then as you can see the vines survived so killing them is not the easiest job. Birds are some of my favorite things just because they're easily murdered. You can easily trap a bit of birds, get them completely trapped, and just burn them. Or you can use other ways such as acid, which will melt through birds quite easily. But birds are a very fun thing to play with. The bombs are a very important one as they are the main way of destroying viruses is just by bombing them. Now if with all these bombs and all these materials you gotta wonder is there any way to survive this? And crystal for if you haven't done much research crystal would say is the strongest because it's the only material this is metal this is crystal this is acid on metal completely melts through Lava on metal melts straight through. Water on metal will take a long time but would melt straight through. However, if you get some crystal, water does nothing to crystal, acid does nothing to crystal, and lava does nothing to crystal. So, gotta wonder well, what can get through the crystal? Is anything? It must be the strongest thing. Lasers can go through crystal, except lasers simply just send a laser through it and change the color of it, which is a very interesting little fact about it. However, there is something that can destroy crystal. If we get a line of crystal, you can simply just bomb your way through it. Now, metal, like I said, very vulnerable, unless you're using bombs, where then metal will take the form of the bombs, and bombs can't get through metal. So you must be saying, hmm, well, isn't there a way that we can combine these two? Which you can, if you right-click on both crystal and normal click. Let's click on metal and right-click on crystal and then press them both at the same time. You can create a crystal metal mix named Cradle. And this Cradle will be much more resistance to things such as lava and acid. However, it's not 100% resistant. If we increase the speed, you'll see that most likely eventually, especially the lava, will get through. Which, it will start dripping, meaning that we were unsuccessful. However, there is something. And that's if you do pump in metal. If you pump, it works the same as crystal, can't be destroyed by crystal. However, it sucks in water, which means it well, sucks in lava. Which means if you pour lava on it, or you pour water on it, it will get sucked up without doing much damage, meaning that it would be very hard to get through this. And you can't bomb this, because if you drop bombs on it, the metal will just take its place. And speaking of, you also can't bomb Cradle either. Because Cradle, when bombed, will also create metal, if you hit a metal spot. But Cradle is much more uneven, and it's hard to see what's what. But using the pump metal mix, named Pummel, is much easier. That is all that. And now we are going to come to some more of the more fine-tuned details. For example, if you get crystal, and then you put thunder on the crystal, the crystal will light up. If you get crystal, and then you color the crystal for a bit, then you send a signal through it then it will send a bright type of signal through it 
if you get metal and you put thunder through it, it will stay inside of it. Now, if you get glass and you put thunder into it, it will explode. However, if you get a line of glass and then you get a metal part to it, and then you make it as much as a straight line as possible, which we will actually going to use the straight line tool, then you create a straight line through it, and what you can do is you can add a little bit of thunder and every single time it will actually light up the thing. If we add a bit more thunder then you can get even more until you have a system that will just make the that will, will just make it all glow. This is a very interesting little thing that most people will not know about. Because it's so weird to think that you that if you thunder glass it explodes and if you thunder metal it stays inside but nobody thinks if if metal, thunder inside of metal will make that glass light up. Uh, another interesting fact is fireworks. This is a firework and when you place down fireworks as you'd expect when you light them off they explode so if you light a ton of them off you just get a big thing of powder in the sky. But there's more to them. If I take fireworks and then I right click on laser and then I burn them they'll shoot off lasers because I right clicked on laser so they have fireworks that have lasers inside of them. This doesn't work for everything. You can even create a chain of fireworks though because it works. It doesn't work with solid materials but it should work for a lot of liquid materials. So if I get some lava fireworks and then I create a line of those and then I create the tiniest little bit of fire they shoot off lava and they will just expand how much of it is exploding until it completely takes over the other side. So that's an interesting thing about fireworks. Then an interesting thing about virus, this little thing right here, is that virus can create an infinitely growing material. Here we'll create a little box and normally you'd think Normally you would think, how in the world would virus get over to the other end? Well, you see, this is a cloner. And if we add some fire to this, it starts cooking fire. But then, what would happen if we created a piece of clone, and then we put a virus on it? Would it clone the virus? Well, not exactly. The virus will take it over, but then it will come back as a cloner and clone the virus. Meaning that it will slowly get bigger as a genetic mutation. So if we speed up to 8 times speed, as you can see, it will slowly, slowly just grow faster and faster. It's a very interesting little thing, and they grow off of edges really, really quickly. If we get one right here, then as you see, it will extend, and then maybe a bit at the first, but then it will become really big, really fast. These things are big. Now we're going to go to player stuff. With players, there's a couple of special powers. So most powers are just normal. Here is sand power. You shoot sand. Here is water power. You shoot water. It's quite simple, really. However, there is a another thing that you can do. A couple of secret power-ups, well, I guess they're not secret, but they're different. If you think nitro is shoot nitro, you would be wrong. Nitro, when you use nitro power, it's actually jetpack. So you can fly using a jetpack because nitro ex will it just explode at your back and make you be able to fly. The other interesting power is ice which you may think is, sh which wouldn't be shoot ice, but is rather freeze yourself. So when you're holding down, you can't move. Or you move very slowly. But as you can see, we are frozen, but our other guy is not frozen. It's a very interesting power-up to use. You can't get metal power-up because there isn't anything for it. 
but that is the most of them. So that is most of the power-ups that you have to know for players. They are quite cool. Now there's one final thing that you can do. You can first change the background, but that would be something for you to figure out on your own. However, you can turn on side loop, and you can erase the walls. And once upon erasing the walls, what you can do is once they've been completely erased, you can add, well, some wind. Or, as I like to do it, you add simply add some gas, and then you burn it which will create a whole lot of wind. So as you see it moves faster and faster but it's still not are completely fast enough as we would like it to be. We can fill it up with many different materials to try and get it to completely explode once we fill it up. If you're not noticing what's happening here, when something goes over the top, it disappears and becomes very hard to get rid of die ants. So, once we add all this gas and we cook all the gas, we can get it to an interesting little state where there is just materials moving by. And in this state, if you just fill up the entire room with gas, Depending on how well you add your wind, you can create an interesting effect. And that is a staticky TV effect. While this may not look like a staticky TV effect, you can actually get it. And if you look at the very bottom, you can actually see that there is a little bit of staticky TV effect. What happens is, as you can see, now it is getting much closer to the effect. as more wind, I think, is how you get to this effect. Is that the red is not good, and what you want to do is fill the entire thing up with gas, and continue to burn it until you get just the right mix that you want. So you just continue getting more and more wind. You see, this one is now much more affected in the correct way. So now if we fill this entire thing with up with gas, it will have more parts of it will be static TV than other parts. Which they make a very interesting effect. Another thing that you can do is if you add lasers, they will never stop. So if we just increase the speed and add a whole bunch of lasers, then what you can do is you can add virus and there's a chance that you will create a virus tornado. So a tornado of infinite viruses. So that is a lot of interesting things that you can do in this type of game. There are a couple of less used things such as fuses and mercury and things like that are used much less than normal. But this is one of my favorite games, the Stain Powder game. I'll have the link in the description. Well, it's actually the second powder game, but I'll have the link in the description. You can check out Powder Game 1 if you want. It really is just this but with less things i mean the only thing that it has that this doesn't has it have is a thing called a wheel which is really just a windmill wheel so you really don't need to have that much so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe see ya